Immigration consequences for crimes can still get you deported, even if you have a green card. You cannot at any time until you become a US citizen, register to vote or vote in any election. Hey guys, welcome back. After I represent a client who's married to a US citizen and that client becomes a conditional permanent resident, I have a closing conversation with them where I discuss some do's and don'ts of permanent residents and we discuss what the future timeline looks like and I answer all of the questions that they may still have. We're going to be having that conversation today and this is pretty much 80% of the conversation that I would have with any of my clients after they become a conditional permanent resident. The first thing I talk about is the timeline for applying to remove conditions on residency. So if you just became a resident, one year and nine months from the day you become a resident, you can apply to remove the conditions on residency. It's a simple form, the I-751. You could do it yourself or with a lawyer. But the important thing for those one year and nine months is to save any ongoing evidence of your good faith marriage with your US citizen spouse. It's super important that you save anything that's addressed to both of you, any joint tax returns, bank accounts, credit cards, any trips you guys take together, joint health insurance, car insurance, anything. If you have kids together, that's amazing. Congratulations. We will have to submit their birth certificates when we apply to remove conditions on your residency. And if you are able to save enough evidence, then there will probably not be another interview to remove the conditions on your green card. One year after that, so at the two year and nine month mark, you are technically eligible to apply for naturalization. Now, whether or not that naturalization application will be processed and approved before your conditions have been removed is a question of policy and it's constantly evolving. But I generally recommend that people apply for citizenship as soon as possible. And guess what? To apply that early after just two years and nine months, you still need to show evidence that you're in a good faith marriage. So it's going to be a continuation of the same stuff you submitted a year prior to remove the conditions on your residency, except for at least one more year. One of the things that I like to do is go through some parts of the naturalization application with my clients just so they can know what will be expected of them when it's time for them to naturalize. So one of the things that the N-400 application for naturalization will ask you is for your entire travel history for the last five years. They want to know the exact date you departed the US, the exact date you returned, how many days total you spent outside of the US and the countries you visited. And the reason for this is to see that you've maintained the continuous residence requirements, physical presence requirements for naturalization. If you're applying for naturalization based on marriage to a US citizen, or otherwise actually, you need to show that you have spent more than 51% of your time in the US and that you have not left the US for more than six months consecutively, 180 days. Um, so let's say you took one trip that was 182 days, then we would have to start the time frame all over again and you would have to wait three or five years from that date, depending on whether you're still married and living with your US citizen spouse. One of the other things that the N-400 asks is, since you've become a permanent resident, have you filed a tax return during every year? Yes or no? The answer should generally be yes if you've worked during all those years. But let's say you became a permanent resident and it wasn't through a US citizen spouse. It was another way. Uh, you became a permanent resident when you were a child and you were in school, not working. We will probably answer no, you haven't filed a tax return every year because you haven't worked every year. Um, but if you've earned an income since you've become a permanent resident, generally speaking, you must file a tax return every year. Uh, I like to see my clients file jointly with their US citizen spouse because that will also serve as evidence that they're commingling their finances and it's just additional evidence that they're continuing to be in a good faith marriage. So it'll help with the citizenship application. It'll also help to remove the conditions on their residency. 
One of the big parts of the N400 naturalization application is about any police contact you may have had. And this is what I tell all of my clients. If you ever are arrested or cited or really have any contact with the police, speak with me. I know you're gonna probably have a criminal defense attorney, but you also need to speak with an immigration lawyer because an immigration lawyer, generally speaking, is the best person to advise you on the consequences of certain crimes. And I've worked with criminal defense attorneys to help come up with a plan or a plea deal or some way for the criminal matter to be disposed of that's not gonna have immigration consequences. Immigration consequences for crimes can still get you deported even if you have a green card. So this is super important. Uh, it can also affect your timeline for citizenship. For example, you generally need to show a period of five years of good moral character when you apply for citizenship. Well, if you get a DUI during that five year period, you can expect the five year period to start over. Uh, from when you finish serving the sentence. So let's say you get a DUI and then you have one year of probation after the DUI. When that probationary period is over, that's when the five years would restart for citizenship where after five more years pass, we would show, uh, we can apply for citizenship and then show that during the last five years, you've been clean, you haven't had any criminal problems, you've been a person of good moral character for the last five years. And um, again, those five years are calculated from the day you apply for citizenship. They'll look back five years from that moment. One of the most important things I tell my clients is that you cannot at any time until you become a U.S. citizen, register to vote or vote in any election. Um, even if you're allowed to register and vote, it will seriously create immigration problems in the future. Uh, along those lines, you can never claim to be a US citizen on any paperwork uh, or in any way, verbally, in written form, or in any other way. If you're ever asked what's your immigration status, you cannot say you're a US citizen. This comes up in many contexts, but a, a common one is when someone is changing employers and they're filling out like the IRS forms and they fill out the tax paperwork for their new employer where you provide your social security number and they ask you what's your immigration status and it says permanent resident citizen or other if you accidentally select citizen and you don't timely retract it which means you don't fix it within a reasonable period of time probably before that employer relied on that paperwork um, you might not ever be able to come back from that a false claim to US citizenship has some of the most serious immigration consequences you can imagine. And this is a topic that I see regularly discussed in immigration forums uh, that are for immigration lawyers where new lawyers are learning about these consequences and they are usually shocked at what they learn and that their client is completely out of luck and there's no way to fix their situation. So under no circumstance can you ever say that you're a US citizen until you become a US citizen. And there you have it. That's the conversation I have with every client after they get their conditional green card through marriage to a US citizen. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below. Within a few days of this video posting, I will make sure to reply to any question or comment that you guys post. I make these videos oftentimes based on the suggestions and comments that you guys provide. So if there's a topic you guys wanna see me delve into or explain in detail, put it in the comments below. And if it's an appropriate topic, I will make the video on that topic. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on a weekly basis. And so be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week for another video.